Okay, so today's topic is on solving linear equations. Solving linear equations. We'll give a little background today on how to solve linear equations, and then we'll do just a whole bunch of examples, okay? So let's take a look at, uh, at a linear equation here. So we have 3x plus 2 equals 12. Okay, here's an example of a, of a linear equation. Our job is to solve this, okay? So this word solve, this word solve means you want to get the variable, get the variable, or in this case, x, by itself, or alone, okay, whatever you prefer. So here is this 3x plus 2 equals 12, right? Here's this equation, and if you draw a line down the equal sign, this separates the equation into two parts, the left side and the right side. Our job is to get x alone. So if it's on the left side, leave it on the left side. So what does that mean? Well, that means that this 2 has to somehow come over here, and this 3 has to somehow come on this side. They have to jump across that equal sign, okay? If you, if you prefer this, maybe prefer jump across. Somehow they have to get across that line, the 3 and the 2, so that in the end, your final answer says x, sorry, says x equals, and we have some number, okay? And that would be, that's going to be our solutions, okay? This right here, we'll call that the solution. Okay. So, in order to get the variable by itself, we need to use this idea. It's called the property of equality, okay? So, let me scoot this up. We need to use what's called the property of equality. Or we could call them the properties of equality because we'll talk about the operations. The property of equality. The property of equality states whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, whatever operation you perform to one side, So whatever operation you perform to one side of the equation, you must perform to the other side. Okay, so the property of equality states whatever operation you perform to one side of the equation, you must perform to the other side. All right. And we need to understand that in order to move things, we have to use the inverse operations. Inverse operations. Inverse operations. And what these are, these are operations that undo that undo each other. Inverse operations are operations that undo. They undo each other. So for instance, if we're talking about how do I get rid of addition, I'll use a different color. No, I don't mind. So how do I use addition? How do I get rid of addition? Well, you have to subtract something. You use subtraction. And vice versa. So I'll put this double arrow. A subtraction. How do you get rid of subtraction? You add something. A uh, uh, similar thing with multiplication and division. If I have something being multiplied with something, I have to then divide by it. 
and vice versa. If I'm dividing by something, I multiply by it to get rid of it. So these inverse operations and this property of equality are what we're going to use to solve these linear equations. Okay, so let's get busy. Let's get to work. Let's do some examples. All right, so example one. Oh, I'm sorry. All these are going to be the same examples. Solve. Right, find the solution, solve. So our first example is the following. X minus 8 equals 12. So again, if you want to, you can draw this line down the equal sign to separate it and ask yourself, how do I get X by itself? Well, right now, you are subtracting 8 from X. To undo subtraction, we add 8. If I do it to the left side, I have to do it to the right side. Add 8. So what happens is, on this left side, x comes down. The 8s go away, because you're subtracting 8 and adding 8. That just becomes 0. Equals, and 12 plus 8 is 20. So your answer to this problem is x equals 20. We will not do this for every problem, but you can also check your answers. If you want to check, you plug in the value. So that's how you check. You plug in the value. So if I take this value of x and plug it in, 20 minus 8 equals 12. What is 20 minus 8? 20 minus 8 is 12. 12 equals 12. And you know you've done it right, because you get a true statement out. Number two. Number two says t, I'm sorry, not t. We're going to use all x's. The book will use different variables, but we'll use all x's. x over 4 equals negative 7. And the question is, what is happening to the x? Again, if you want to draw your equal sign, draw the line to the equal sign. How do I get x by itself? What is happening right now? x is being divided by 4. So we're going to times both sides by 4. The times 4 and divide by 4 cancel leaves you with x equals negative 7 times 4 is negative 28. So here is my answer, x equals negative 28. And again, if you want to check, you can check on your own. All right, third example. Let's take a look at negative 3x plus 6 equals negative 12. So again, if you want to draw the line to the equal sign, anything I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Here's my x. Now there's two things happening to the x. Connected to the x is a negative 3. This means multiplication, okay? So right here, this means multiplication. And then over here, you have addition. Now, we want to get rid of the thing that is the farthest from the x. So we need to get rid of this first. So get rid of that first, the plus 6. In order to get rid of a plus 6, I think I need to subtract 6. If I do it to the left side, I have to do it to the right side. So this negative 3x comes down. The plus 6 and minus 6 cancel. Equal sign comes down, and negative 12 minus 6 is negative 18. So again, I still want to get this x by itself, right? So it is being, sorry, it's being multiplied by negative 3. So to get rid of multiplication, I divide by negative 3 on both sides. The negative 3s cancel because you're multiplying and dividing, and I get x equals, and negative 18 divided by negative 3 is positive 6. x equals 6. Okay, all right, 3 down. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Number 4. 4th example. Let's take a look at 5x minus 1 equals 9. So again, if you want to draw this line through the equal sign, that's totally okay. You don't have to. This is just what I'm showing. Here's the x. Two things, 5 times x, and 5x minus negative 1. Get rid of the minus 
oh, sorry, minus 1. Get rid of the minus 1 first by adding it. If I do it to the left side, I have to do it to the right side. So when I add 1 to both sides, your 5x will come down. The minus 1 plus 1 cancel. Equal sign comes down, and 9 plus 1 is 10. Okay. So here's my x. It's being times by 5 to get rid of multiplication. We divide by 5 on both sides. The 5's cancel. x equals 10 divided by 5 is 2. And there's my answer. x equals 2. Okay. Continuing on with the fifth example. My uh, fifth example says 3x plus 7 equals 5p minus 1. I'm sorry, not 5p, 5x minus 1. I apologize. Okay, so 3x plus 7 equals 5x minus 1. So here is a situation where you have x's on both sides, right? x here, x here. Now, if you, you draw this, this line down the equal sign, you want to get x by itself. But in order to get x by itself, you must first get these two guys together. Now, the problem is this equal sign. This pesky equal sign is keeping them apart. So in order to get them together, you have to move one to the other side. You have to move it across this equal sign, right? You have to move it. So, you have two choices. You can either move the 3x to the right or the 5x to the left. It really doesn't matter. Um, if you move 3x to the right, you're going to keep this number in front of x positive. So that's my suggestion, is to move the 3x to the right. It doesn't matter. You can move the 5x to the left. It's okay. But I'm going to move the 3x to the right. And in order to do that, this 3 is positive, right? There's addition going on. So to move the 3x, you must subtract 3x. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. So the 3x cancels. My 7 comes down, equals. And now I combine 5x and 3x. It's 5x minus 3x. That's 2x minus 1. And now here is my x. There is what I want to get by itself. So I have two things to do. There's a 2 being multiplied with x and a 1 subtracting from the 2x. So get rid of this minus 1 first by adding it. If I do it to the right side, I have to do it to the left side. OK, let me extend this line. So we have 7 plus 1, which is 8 equals, and the 2x comes down. These 1s then cancel. So again, I have this x by itself. It's being multiplied with 2, so let's divide by 2 on both sides. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 equals the 2's cancel x. There you go. So you can leave that as your answer, or if you want to put x first, like I like to, x equals 4. And there you go. Okay. Next example. I have three more, and then we will be done. Okay, a uh, similar example to, to the one we just did. Let's do um, negative 6 plus 7x equals 2x plus 9. All right. So again, if I draw this line down the equal sign, right? first thing I need to do is I need to get these x's together. You can't get them alone until you get them together. Again, think about either subtracting 7x or subtracting 2x. I'm going to subtract the 2x to keep the coefficient or the number for the x positive. If I do it on the right side, I have to do it to the left side. So this negative 6 comes down. 7x minus 2x is 5x equals. These 2x's cancel. And the 9 comes down. So now here's my x. I need to get it by itself. Two things, it's being multiplied with 5, and a minus 6 is being added, OK? So there's addition. There's addition going on. So to get rid of this minus 6, I need to add or subtract. It's a minus 6, so in order to get rid of it, you have to add it. Add 6. If I do it to this side, I have to do it to the right side as well. These 6's cancel. 
the 5x comes down equals, and 9 plus 6 is 15. Last thing that I will do, right, here's my x. I need to keep getting it by itself. It's being multiplied with 5, so let's divide by 5. The 5's cancel. x equals, and 15 divided by 5 is 3, and there's our answer. Okay, two more to go. And these last ones are a little bit different, so we're going to have to talk, talk a little bit about um, some property. So we're looking at 2 times uh, 5x minus 6 equals negative 4 times x minus 3, plus 4 at the end. Okay, so 2 times the quantity of 5x minus 6 equals negative 4 times the quantity of x minus 3 plus 4. So when you see these parentheses, so we see this as an example right here, right, the parentheses with the number in front, this requires what's called the distributive property. Distributive property. So let's use... Um, this is an example. We'll just pull it down here. 2 times 5x minus 6. What the distributive property is, it's a multiplication. Okay? This 2 out here, it's being multiplied. So there's 2 times you need to multiply the 2. All right? So what, what I typically do is the following. Okay? I'll use an arrow. There's two multiplications you have to do. 2 times 5x and 2 times negative 6. Those are the two multiplications you have to do. 2 times 5x, 2 times negative 6. So whatever you get, that's what becomes the new, the new terms. So 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. There you go. 10x minus 12. 10x minus 12. All right. So it's two multiplications. So let's bring this problem back down. 2 times 5x minus 6 equals negative 4x minus 3 plus 4. You always distribute first, okay? You need to drop these parentheses. So we're going to distribute here. So again, it's two multiplications, five times or 2 times 5x, which is 10x, 2 times negative 6, which is negative 12. Okay? Over here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on the side, because we, we already did that one above. So this is negative 4 times x and negative 4 times negative 3. Those are the two multiplications. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. And then the plus 4 comes down. So there's how the distributive property works. Okay. So then here we go. We're, we're still not moving. Notice I haven't drawn my my line down the equal sign because there's nothing being moved left or right because I can still combine some things on one side. There's a plus 12 and a plus 4 on one side. Combine those. 10x minus 12 equals negative 4x and 12 plus 4 is 16. Now we'll draw the line down the equal sign and now we need to worry about moving some things over. Okay, let me scoot this up so I can so I can draw better. Okay, so x's. x here, x here. Get them together. In order to do that, you have to move it across the equal sign. I have to do something with an inverse operation and then using the property of equality on both sides. So instead of subtracting 10x, let's add 4x. Add 4x. Add 4x. So 10x and 4x is 14x. The minus 12 comes down equals... These 4x's go away, and you get 16. The 16 comes down how we, we put it out here, 16. All right, here's my x. Two things i got to do. Get rid of this minus 12, get rid of that 14. Let's add 12 to get rid of that first. 14x comes down. The minus 12's go away. Equals, and 16 plus 12 is 28. Got an x here, it's being multiplied by 14, divide by 14. 14's cancel because you're multiplying and dividing. x 
equals, and 28 divided by 14 is 2. Okay, let's try one more of those and I'll be done. All right, distributive property. You gotta make sure you distribute first. Okay, I'm actually going to go to this to the side. Give me a second. Okay. All right, and we'll finish here with the last example. Example eight. All right, so we're looking at five times the quantity of 2x minus 1 equals 3 times the quantity of x minus 4. So again, when you see those parentheses, the first thing is, I can't touch these x's until these parentheses are gone. Distribute. It's two multiplications. 5 times 2x. 5 times 2x, which is 10x. 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. It's two multiplications. 3 times x, which is 3x. 3 times negative 4, which is negative 12, minus 12. Now I'll go ahead and draw my equal sign. Draw, draw my line down the equal sign. Now I can start moving things. Here's x. Here's x. I can either subtract 10x or subtract 3x. Let's subtract 3x from both sides. Notice it's usually the smaller one that we move, okay, usually. So 10 minus 3 is 7x, the minus 5 comes down, the equals comes down, and we get a negative 12. Minus 12 comes down, the 3x is canceled. Here's my x, two things I gotta do, get rid of this 5, get rid of this 7, so we gotta add 5 to both sides. 7x, the 5's go away, equals negative 5, or negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. Get that x by itself, it's being multiplied by 7, so divide by 7. The 7's cancel, x equals, oh, I'm oh, sorry, 7's go away, x equals, and negative 7 divided by 7 is negative 1. Alright, very good job with solving linear equations.